Hello, and so we come to part three of my unmanned rocket quest. This is Scott Manley back at Kerbal Space Central. And I've realized that using the lateral decouplers, uh, basically, as we've demonstrated, it imparts a rotation, which is very difficult to control. So I've decided to redesign my launch pad to use uh, regular decouplers. Now, there is a minor problem with this. If we uh, demonstrate it, we can find, um, where do we go? There, get ourselves a rocket and stick it on the middle there. And we've got our staging set up and let's launch and see what happens when we try to launch this. Um, do you think it's going to go well? I mean, I know because I've tried this before. But yeah, let's, uh, all we need to do is wait for the physics engine to kick in and hit space. And yeah, um, we've detached it, but it won't move. The, despite the decoupler being decoupled, either it looks like the actual rocket is generating no thrust. However, it does eventually destroy the decoupler because it's uh, sitting under the rocket. But uh, that does seem to damage it and it explodes before it gets even a couple of kilometers up. So yeah, um, we have to use the radial decouplers to get a straight launch without any rotation, but we can't actually put them directly under any rockets. We need to somehow come up with another solution. And the plan I have is we can use the aircraft fuselage to provide a light core, and then we can strap you know, other rockets around it, like I'm demonstrating with this small booster package here. So there we go. What will happen is that those are not going to be impeded by the existence of a decoupler directly beneath them. So they should just go straight like an arrow into space or at least into the upper atmosphere because they won't get all the way there. Oh, well, let us... I don't know. I'm throttling up. There we go. Look at that. Accelerate. The acceleration is like, you know, ridiculous. Going up, but... Oh! Yeah, something's going wrong here. Uh, it doesn't seem to be particularly stable. Hmm. Again, it makes pretty patterns across the sky. It'd be really nice to watch this from afar, except that if I switched away, I, it would disappear magically from the game. Ah, uh, that'll be something I we will no doubt experience in future versions. Which, Harvester just started discussing version 0.17, and I'm getting excited because he mentioned new planets. So let's uh, let's just forget about the solid rockets and start building a rocket with fuel in the middle. So I think what we can do is build a core of a regular liquid fuel rocket, and instead of building a single thruster underneath, we can put three of them in, you know, a triangle around the base, and pipe fuel out to them. Um, I'm going to try and put the toroidal aerospike. As you can see, we have issues fitting it. Um, but somebody did point out that if you can get one fitted, then it becomes a whole lot easier to try and fit the whole package like this. And I'm trying and clicking and moving, seeing if it will stick anywhere. Um, I don't want to... Oh, wait, we had it. Oh, I lost it. Curses! There we go. Ah, ah, now we have a rocket that is just functional. And we need to pipe the fuel from that middle rocket out. And that is us. We can leave it blunt-nosed like that. It shall just push its way through the atmosphere without any need for aerodynamics. I hope. So, this we should have more than enough fuel to get into orbit. Let's see what happens. Fire up. And detach. And there it goes, carrying the stage separator with it. And immediately it's starting to arc over because I realize I have forgotten something which I used previously. I don't have any airfoils on this, any wings. Let's, so it's um, it's just rotating randomly. Let's uh, go back and fit those. I'll just be a moment. Let me go. Um, oh, yep, yeah, come on, where's my symmetry? Thank you. Get it lined up. Whoa, that looks kind of cool. We should put some air intakes and stuff on that to make it look awesome, even although they do nothing. Okay, now let's see if we can take this thing higher and further than before. Without the random spinning or the random perturbations of the previous launch system, let's see if this symmetrically 
the symmetric launch system can work. Well, it's looking better now. Going straight up, accelerating at a few Gs. Turning over just a little, but um, not enough that I'm worried. Yep, so we've burnt out our external tanks and we're going to start draining those. And uh, yeah, trajectory is looking good and we are accelerating at quite a speed, yeah. We get a little bit of overheating because the engines are next to each other, but I don't think it's going to be an issue here. It's probably an issue with the solid rocket motors more. Okay, so now we're starting to get up. Um, the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure is dropping off. We'll see how this thing fares once the airfoils stop providing stabilizing action. And I can see that it is starting to rotate a little. We were almost exactly along the, the east vector there. That would be great, but oh, we're totally rolling away from that now. But the engines are still firing, and as long as we're pointing you know, roughly the right way, it should help us get higher and faster. We're definitely moving at suborbital trajectories. Assuming that we don't point straight downwards, we will make it into space with this. Oh, oh, right, yep, we are now officially pointing at the ground. And spinning back up again. Yes, get as close to our orbit vector so we can gain some more speed. 64 kilometers. Wow, look at that. We're totally getting some altitude there. This will be a record setter for me. Oh, yes. But as you can see, the thing rotates that, um, that orbit is highly eccentric and not behaving particularly well. Well, okay, we have burned out. Let's see where we go. How high are we going to go? Oh, that's a great altitude. And um, it doesn't look like we're going to move far across the surface, but you have to understand that we are going to go up a couple of thousand kilometers and come back down. And during that time, the planet shall rotate underneath us. And it will not only give us a record in altitude, but a record in distance, bringing us down on this other continent, which is no doubt filled with the enemies of uh, Jebediah, right? We're pretty close to that secret space center, if you remember. It'd be kind of cool if I landed right on top of that, but that's not going to happen. Well, I think that is a successful test. Let us, um, well, let us consider where we shall go from here. I have a plan, and it shall be revealed. But first, let's watch an explosion. We all like explosions. I like the way that the air is now catching those airfoils and is pointing straight downwards. And of course, this is a great time to remind you that, yeah, I am Scott Manley, and you guys should fly safe, even although I am plunging this straight into the planet. Oh, yes, and the decoupler survives for a few more... Oh, yeah, well, a few more seconds.